As we discussed in Episode 1 of ATCAST, when an aircraft first enters the ATC system and requests radar services or is on an IFR flight plan, controllers must use one of six approved methods to radar identify that aircraft. Once the radar identification of an aircraft has been established, that identification can be transferred to another controller within the same facility or at a different facility, either manually or using automation. This episode will explain how to transfer radar identification of an aircraft from one controller to another. We will explore the terms involved, the methods that can be used, and what responsibilities controllers have when using these procedures today on ATCAST. Let's begin by covering some terminology. These definitions can be found in the 7110.65 in Chapter 5, Section 4, Paragraph 2. The first term, handoff, is defined as the physical or automated action taken to transfer the radar identification of an aircraft from one controller to another controller if the aircraft will enter the receiving controller's airspace and radio communications with the aircraft will be transferred. Note that the definition states the radio communications will be transferred. Communications transfer does not have to happen at the same time as the transfer of radar identification. Radar contact means that the aircraft is identified and approval is granted for the aircraft to enter the receiving controller's airspace. A point out is a physical or automated action to transfer the radar identification of an aircraft to another controller if the aircraft will or may enter the airspace of another controller and radio communications will not be transferred. Point out approved means that the controller receiving the point out has identified the aircraft and has granted approval for that aircraft to enter his or her airspace as coordinated without the transfer of radio communications. Note that the phrase as coordinated means that the receiving controller has approved the requested actions of the other controller. If the other controller needs to do something else with the aircraft, that action must be coordinated separately. Point out approved is not approval to use the receiving controller's airspace for any purpose other than what was coordinated. Traffic is a term used to transfer radar identification of an aircraft for the purpose of coordinating separation. Traffic is normally issued in response to a handoff or point out, in anticipation of a handoff or point out, or in conjunction with a request for control of an aircraft. If traffic is issued in order to coordinate separation, the controller accepting the restrictions becomes responsible for maintaining separation between the aircraft involved. The last term is traffic observed. This is the response the transferring controller would use when issued traffic. It means that the controller initiating the point out sees the traffic, will abide by any restrictions imposed by the other controller, and is now responsible for separation between his or her aircraft and the aircraft indicated by the other controller. Three methods may be used to transfer the radar identification of an aircraft between controllers. The first method is to physically point to the receiving controller's radar display. This method is pretty self-explanatory. If you are sitting near the receiving controller, simply point to the target on his or her display and complete the handoff or point out. The second method is to use landline voice communications. This method is often used for manually transferring radar identification of an aircraft to another facility, such as between Academy Approach and Aero Center. The third method is to use automation capabilities. If an aircraft is on an IFR flight plan and its information has been entered into the flight data system, simply initiate a handoff from your keyboard to make the aircraft flash on the receiving controller's display. For training purposes here at UND, if an aircraft has filed IFR in the air and is remaining in Approach's airspace, controllers must manually hand off that aircraft using one of the first two methods. For example, if an aircraft is taking off from Vinny and requests IFR clearance to James, that aircraft must be manually handed off to the North controller because no information exists in the computer for that aircraft. Conversely, if November 219 or Delta Lima has entered the airspace and is an IFR overflight, that aircraft's flight plan exists in the computer system and the South controller may use an automated handoff. 
The phraseology for a manual handoff contains the following items, which must be stated in this order. The word handoff, the position of the target relative to something depicted on the radar display of both controllers, such as navigational fixes or airports, the aircraft identification, which could be a call sign or a discrete beacon code if the call sign is not displayed to both controllers, and the altitude of the aircraft. If you are physically pointing to the receiving controller's display, you do not need to state the target's position, but the rest of the information must still be stated. Here are some examples of methods and phraseology for transferring radar identification. A manual handoff can be completed on a landline, such as for an air-filed IFR aircraft. South. North, north handoff, two three miles northwest of Ikemi Airport, November two one nine or Delta Lima at thousand. November two one nine or Delta Lima radar contact, Julie Bravo. November Bravo. Physically pointing to another controller's radar display can be used as well. The correct phraseology must still be used, but you can omit the target's location. Handoff November 666 Golf Bravo at 6000. November 666 Golf Bravo, radar contact G Bravo. November Bravo. Automated handoffs can be done for most IFR aircraft entering or leaving the airspace, provided that there are no abnormal items depicted in the data block, such as CST, OLD, AMB, or NAT. Simply initiate the handoff, and when radar identification has been accepted by the receiving controller, transfer communications. Both the transferring and receiving controller have certain responsibilities when transferring radar identification. The controller initiating the transfer has five primary responsibilities. First, he or she must complete a radar handoff before the aircraft enters the next controller's airspace. Second, if any changes to the aircraft's heading, altitude, or data block information is changed during or after the handoff, Verbal approval must be obtained from the receiving controller unless specified in a letter of agreement or facility directive. Third, before communications are transferred, any conflicts with other aircraft or airspace boundaries must be resolved and any necessary coordination with other controllers must be completed. Fourth, communications must be transferred after the completion of the radar handoff and prior to the aircraft entering the receiving controller's airspace. The radar handoff is complete when the receiving controller verbally states radar contact, or if using automation, the target is accepted by the next sector. Finally, any important information about the aircraft, such as speed or altitude restrictions, must be passed along to the receiving controller if such information deviates from normal procedures or is otherwise different from what is normally expected. The receiving controller has four responsibilities. First, the identity of the target must be confirmed. This can be done by observing the target at the location stated by the transferring controller if using a manual handoff, or by observing a data block associated with the target if using an automated handoff. Second, before accepting the handoff, the receiving controller must ensure that the aircraft entering his or her airspace will not conflict with any other aircraft. Third, any control instructions issued before the aircraft enters the receiving controller's airspace must be coordinated unless specified in a letter of agreement or facility directive. Finally, the target's mode C altitude must be verified. Now for a quick review. There are six terms associated with the transfer of radar identification. They are handoff, which is a transfer of radar identification and radio communications, radar contact, which means that the receiving controller has identified the aircraft and granted permission for it to enter his or her airspace. Point out, which is a transfer of radar identification but not radio communications. Point out approved, which is permission from the receiving controller to enter his or her airspace for the purpose requested in the point out. Traffic, which is issued by the controller receiving the point out for the purpose of maintaining separation. Traffic observed, which is an indication by the transferring controller that he or she sees the traffic and is now responsible for maintaining separation between that traffic and the aircraft entering the receiving controller's airspace. Three methods may be used to transfer radar identification of an aircraft. Physically pointing to another controller's radar display, using landline communications, and using automated handoff capabilities. The controller initiating a transfer of radar identification has five responsibilities. First, 
the handoff must be completed before the aircraft enters the receiving controller's airspace. Second, any changes to the aircraft's heading, speed, or altitude made during or after the handoff must be coordinated with the receiving controller. Third, any conflicts with other aircraft or airspace boundaries must be resolved before communications are transferred. Fourth, communications must be transferred after the radar handoff is completed. Finally, any information about the aircraft, such as altitude or speed restrictions, must be relayed to the receiving controller. The controller receiving the transfer of radar identification has four responsibilities. First, the identity of the target must be confirmed, either by using a data block or by observing the target in the location specified by the transferring controller. Second, the controller must ensure separation from other traffic before accepting the handoff. Third, any control instructions issued before the aircraft enters the receiving controller's airspace must be coordinated with the other controller. Finally, the aircraft's mode C altitude must be verified. On behalf of UND Air Traffic Control, the Student Air Traffic Controller Association and the Aerospace Network, I would like to thank you for tuning in. My name is Kyle Warner. Frequency change approved. For more information on UND Air Traffic Control and to see other videos in this series, visit www.aero.und.edu or search for ATCAST on iTunes University.